Hello there, and for everybody who is new to the channel, first of all, I'd like to say welcome. My name is Andrew McDonald, and I'm a professional photographer. And today I'm going to be giving you my sort of in-field review of the Sony 400mm lens, and I'm going to compare it to the 200 to 600mm lens. The first thing I need to declare is that I am far from being known as a gearhead. In fact, I quite often say that I can't teach you how a camera works, but I can teach you how to work a camera. So in this video, I'm basically just going to be giving you sort of my feedback on what it's been like using these two lenses in the field. Some of you guys might learn something. Some of you might have things that I have missed that you could tell me. So please do drop down in those comments. It's always great to hear from you guys. I also just want to say that Sony did give me a lend of this 400mm lens, but there's no obligation to make any reviews or do any sort of social media postings. They just simply gave me a lend of the lens. So everything that you hear is my own honest opinion. So I am currently here in Lua Plain, Zambia, and I will be using this... Oh, it's not actually that heavy. I will be using this 400mm lens along with the Sony A1, which is pretty much the best sort of camera and lens setup you can get for wildlife and sports photography. And so it should be, because the price of the lens and the body together comes in at around about 20,000 US dollars brand new. And on that note, let's talk about the price. So, the 400mm lens will come in at a whopping 13,000 US dollars brand new, which is a pretty hefty price tag when you consider that the more versatile 200 to 600mm lens will come in at around $2,000 brand new. So on this one, this lens, a 200 to 600, easily wins on the budget. Now let's move on to the sort of weight and feel of the lenses. So the 200-600 lens comes in at around 2.16 kilograms and the big boy here, 400mm, comes in at around 2.9 kilograms. So there's not really a huge difference in the weight and it's not really going to be a defining factor in would you buy this lens or not. Both of the lenses feel extremely well balanced when you're holding them in your hand and I would say both of them are also comfortable to use handheld Although if you're doing sort of sports events where you're going to be standing for long periods of time with this lens, the 400, you're probably going to want to use a monopod or a tripod. But for me, in a safari vehicle, I've most of the time got these things on beanbags for stabilization, so the weight of a lens isn't really too much of a problem, apart from when it might come to traveling with the lenses. And that brings me to my next point, which is how do you travel with these things? So, you'd be surprised to know that you could actually put both of these things into your carry-on luggage, but on the way here, I used my 400mm in my hand luggage and I wrapped up the 200-600 nice and safely, and that went into my check luggage. And both things arrived here very safely. It's also worth noting that the 400mm lens does come with this extremely durable hard shell case. So that does offer another nice safe way to transport the lens. And now the big one, the thing that's probably going to make the difference between if you buy these lenses or not, and that is the performance. If you're wondering why you would possibly buy a 400mm lens, which is $11,000 more than a 200-600 lens, here's a few details on why that might be something you do. To quickly explain, in photography with lenses, there's a thing called aperture or f-stop, and that is basically the lower the number your lens has, the more wide open it can be to gather more light into your camera. So, with a 400mm lens here, that can go down to 2.8, and this one here is much higher, but we'll get onto that just now. So with a 400mm here shooting at 2.8, I can shoot sort of faster shutter speeds in low light with a lower ISO, which results in cleaner and crisper images. Shooting at 2.8 will also allow me to have much more sort of shallow depth of field, which sort of means that your subject is super crispy and then everything else will become blurred and out of focus in the background, which really makes your subject pop. So the lower your aperture number, the more of those things will pop and the faster the fall off will be in focus. So what the 400 lacks in versatility, it makes up for in its low light performance, which is pretty important in photography. So in a little bit more detail, and there's a few numbers coming up here, but I know some of you guys will be very interested. I can shoot at 2.8 at 400mm on this lens, or I can then add, as already on here, the 1.4 teleconverter, which means I can shoot at 560mm at f4. To me, using the teleconverter with this lens is sort of an ideal combination, and I'll explain that a little bit further on in the video. 
But for the teleconverter, you think you're probably going to add an extra four or five hundred dollars just for this little piece here, which extends the zoom of this lens. In comparison, on the 200 to 600 mm lens here, at 200 I can shoot at 5.6, or at 600 I can shoot at 6.3. Now, I can then also add this teleconverter to this lens, which allows me to shoot at a whopping 860 millimeters, but then my aperture is going to drop all the way down to 9, which is really not ideal for low light situations. Both of these lenses will provide pin sharp results when used in the right way, and I really do think you'd have to go into some deep pixel peeping to even tell the difference between them. In brighter conditions, both of these lenses will perform fantastically. It's just that when it's that golden hour or those twilight hours, when you really want to be getting those killer shots, the 400mm will win hand down. Now let's talk a little bit about using the lenses out on the field here on game drives. So one of the big adaptions I've had to make to my photography is when I'm shooting with a 400mm, I need to be very careful about where I'm positioning the safari vehicle. With the 200-600mm lens, I can position the vehicle in one place and shoot a variety of different compositions from 200mm all the way to 600mm. However, with the 400mm, I need to sort of picture with my head how far away I need to be from the subject for the exact composition I want, which as you can imagine takes a little bit of practice or at least an understanding of what it looks like to look through these cameras at the different focal lengths. What I tend to do is drive a vehicle and give myself plenty of room so I can shoot slightly wider shots at 400 millimeters. And then if I want to zoom in and crop in on that image a little bit, I'll add the teleconverter here so I can get those tighter portrait shots. If I misjudge the vehicle position, or for example, if the subject was to move closer to me or further away, it can be very annoying using the 400 because then you need to try and reposition the vehicle, which is not always possible without spooking the animal or there might be trees or bushes or whatever in the way. A second option I would have then is to quickly switch my 200 to 600 mil onto my camera body and then I have sort of the best of both worlds going on there. So that's probably one of the ideal combinations to have. Now, if you know me and my photography, you know that I like to shoot wildlife from as low down as possible. And this is a technique that I use on both of these lenses. In longer grass, I'll hold the tripod foot under the lens. But when I've got shorter grass, what I'll do is I'll change the position of the tripod foot, lower the camera, flick up my rear LCD screen, and I can shoot in what's like an almost underslung style position. Again, this is a method that I will use on both of these lenses, so there's no clear winner here. From this position, it's also very easy just to pop a bean bag down into the footwell where I can put the camera down onto the, onto the floor of the vehicle and get those nice level steady shots. For that, you need a safari vehicle with no door and that is one of my top 10 tips for safari photography, which you can see in the video, which I'll link in the description and maybe it's even up here next to my head somewhere as well. So I really have missed having the sort of ability to go from 200 mil to 600 mil at the sort of twist of a wrist here. But then again, I've also loved the new low light capabilities of shooting with the 400mm. So this section is pretty much a bit of a tie. As I mentioned, the ideal situation is to have both of these lenses. And maybe if you can afford to spend $13,000 on this one, then spending an extra $2,000 on this one isn't such a big deal. And then maybe it's not too bad to spend an extra $6,500, whatever it is just now, on a second A1 body. And then you have the dream setup. Both of these lenses with an A1 on each side, you could not go wrong with that. Let's have a quick look at some of the features on the lenses. There are a bunch of custom buttons on the side, but I actually rarely change these things. This one here toggles auto and manual focus and the DMF, which is pretty much means that if you are in autofocus, the sort of manual focus ring here will still work when you're in autofocus. Below that we have our focal distances, which you can adjust for the most part. Mine's is always on full. In this section here, you can see presets to what the buttons on the lens do, and also the wheel thing here, which um, I, to be honest, I don't really use. Then we have three different options of stabilization. And lastly, a beep on and off. This refers to when you touch and use the customizable buttons on the lens. There's also a place here for filters, and lastly, you can adapt the tripod foot to either click into place or not. A strange thing to have an option to choose from, but personally, I always like to have it so that it clicks into place. The 200-600 also has a few of these features, but not quite as many. 
I do like how you can remove the lens foot on the 200 to 600, but sadly you can't on the 400. Not that it's a real game changer, but for me on the lens sort of functions, the 400 would win this one. So, in conclusion, which of these lenses should you get? And if you've already got this one, should you then also add this one to your gear bundle? I think it comes down to the age old question of budget. If you can afford this lens, I can guarantee you, you will not be disappointed with the results. And when you're on safari or shooting wildlife anywhere in the world, and the light is getting low and you're still getting those sort of nice desirable low ISOs, I think then the money is gonna be worth it. If your budget is a bit lower, then why not go for the 200 to 600 mm lens? And if you're also new to photography, I would recommend going for this lens and then over time, spend that extra $11,000 on some fantastic safari trips where you can then upgrade your portfolio. Sure, some of the images you take might have a little bit more noise than this one, but nowadays there's some fantastic software out there which can help eradicate and sharpen up those images and clean up that noise. And on that note, I actually use a software called Topaz and I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to go and check out their website because the software really does make such a good difference to the start of my editing workflow. And this video is not sponsored by Topaz, it's just a product that I actually love using. Do I want this lens? Absolutely, 100% yes. Will the $11,000 between these two lenses be worth it for me? Personally, one of those things with photography is, is that the more money you spend, the smaller those increments become in the improvement in the images, but the more addictive those small improvements become. And when you're somebody who makes a living in photography, I would say that anything that you can do to improve your work is probably justifiable in the long run. Will this lens be added to my collection anytime soon? Probably, sadly, for now, no. Purely down to sort of budget reasons. For now, it's gonna go highly onto my wish list. So that's pretty much all I've got to say about these two lenses right now. You cannot go wrong with either one. Uh, it's all down to personal preference, situations, what you're shooting, your budget, what you want to achieve with your photography and all these things. But I hope that does give you a little bit of a review because when I, before I came here, I was actually really worried about shooting with a prime lens for the first time and not being able to zoom in and out with the versatility of this lens. But when I've been using this lens, it's rarely crossed my mind that I'm not able to zoom in and out. I've just adjusted the vehicle position, used the teleconverter to get that sort of variety and compositions from the one place and that low light performance in that smooth, smooth background. Yeah. I want this lens. Thank you very much for tuning into this video. I know it's very different to my sort of normal in the field, behind the scenes sort of videos. Uh, I just thought when I had the chance to use this lens, why not make a little bit of a review to maybe help some of you guys who are trying to make that decision. If you did like this video, please do drop down and give it a like. And also please do leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Also please subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell so that you don't miss my upcoming videos and adventures. Thank you as always for joining me on this short in-studio safari adventure and I'll see you very soon on the next one. So do you notice that I keep touching this lens and I also keep touching this lens. These things make such a difference to my life.